Hello, welcome to Toronto Bible Study. I'm your host, Mike Sapat. And today we're going to try something new. I've been at, I've been requested by a number of people over a long period of time now to start making videos explaining sort of problem passages, especially problem passages for the free gracer. Like, so for example, there's one, um, well, I'll show you some anyway. Passages that people usually pull out to say you can either lose your salvation or that uh, you have to do some kind of works or something like that. Uh, those kind of passages. So it's just a series based on explaining those. Okay, so hopefully these won't be too long and we can, um, we can bang out some of these and get people to understand the truth about these. Last night we were having a discussion in my Discord about this one. As it says, And he shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So the, the usually people just, they don't even bother with this part. They'll just pull out this part. He that endureth until the end shall be saved. And then based on that, they they infer that a person must endure to the end to be saved from hell and to get eternal life, go to heaven, okay? But this is, again, the classic error of taking verses out of context. And what happens is, when you take it out of context, it doesn't have the same meaning. You, you, don't, you can't really even understand the meaning of it. When it's out of the context, because the context gives it what's called the framing. It tells you what came before, what came after, what is he talking about, the subject of his discussion here. And only if you understand those things can you understand what exactly this particular verse means. Okay? What the, what, what's typically going on is that, is that the people are having a discussion about this question can you lose your salvation? And so when you just pull out this verse, uh, again, out of the context, and just say it in the midst of that conversation, what happens is the conversation is now giving the framing for that verse. And so you now understand that verse in the context of that subject that you're discussing. So you're discussing the issue of can a person lose their salvation or what must we do to be saved, right? And somebody pulls out this verse, he that endures to the end shall be saved. And so now you think that that has to do with the question of going to heaven, what must we do to, to go to heaven, etc. So in that context, in that framing, that's what it appears to be. That's exactly what it appears to be. And it's very difficult. Now that you've got the, that meaning for that verse in your head, it's difficult to reframe it back into the context. But that's what I'm going to try to do for you today. Because he says, He that endures to the end shall be saved. But saved from what? You have to ask yourself, saved from what? Is it saved from hell or is it saved from something else? And what exactly is he talking about? Is he talking about eternal life and, and going to heaven and all that stuff? Is that what the subject of matter here is? Or is it something else? And I'm going to submit to you that it is, in fact, something else. As I'll show you. So in this, in this chapter, Matthew 10, Jesus has named the 12 apostles. And he's going to send them out to, to heal man, uh, all manner of sickness. Well, I'll read it to you. When he had called 10, verse 1, Matthew 10, verse 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And all manner of disease, okay? Now the names of the 12 apostles are these, and he names them. Okay? And then before Jesus sends them forth, then these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, and then he gets into this long speech that he gives them about various issues, okay? But it's, what's important here is the, is the issue of 
Uh, what he talks about is, um, I mean, he's telling them things like this. Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, but go only unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And so that's kind of the, um, the, those are the first issues that he's dealing with. But then as he gets down into verse 16 here, now he starts talking about the kind of persecution that's going to come on them as they do, as they go forth, as the disciples go forth, spreading the gospel, healing all manner of diseases and casting out demons. There's going to be persecution is going to come on them. And now this is where he starts talking about this. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And you shall be brought before governors and kings for my name's sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father of the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Okay, so all these ter terrible things are happening. And persecution is going to fall on them. They're going to be delivered up to the councils. They're going to have to speak to the governors and, and rulers and have to deal with the charges against them. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. So what is he talking about? Is he talking about being saved from hell? No, he's telling the disciples that when they go out and heal the sick and cast out demons, they are going to be subject to intense persecution and hatred. And what he's saying to them is that if you endure to the end, disciples, the end of this period of persecution that you're about to uh, go through, you will be saved. You'll be safe from that persecution. You won't die. You won't be... You might suffer some 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 persecution, but you won't be really badly, um, really badly hurt. You'll be saved. You'll be saved from that. That's what he's talking about. It has nothing to do with going to hell or going to heaven, nothing whatsoever. Okay. So that's the, that's one example of how people take things out of context and and change the meaning. And this is the this this phrase that, that Jesus used, endure to the end, he that endured to the end will be saved, is only used basically three times in the Bible, okay? There's this one, Matthew 10, 22. And then there's this one in um, Matthew 24. Now, Matthew 24, what he's talking about, again, we have to look at the context, okay? So we go to the beginning of the chapter, is usually a good place to start. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things, the buildings of the temple? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Okay, so he's predicting that the temple buildings will be destroyed. And what he's talking about is actually the, um, the invasion of the Romans of Jerusalem in uh, 70 AD, okay? Well, they invade in like, I think 67 or something, but in 70 AD, they actually destroyed the temple, okay? And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So now Jesus is gonna to talk to them about the end of the world. Okay, this is not talking about going to hell, going to heaven. He's talking to them about what's going to happen when he returns, the sign of thy coming. When shall these things be the destruction of the temple, the sign of thy coming, and the end of the world? Okay, and Jesus answered and said to them, Take, the, take, heed, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. 
It should be, you should hear wars, rumors of wars. Okay. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Famines, pestilences, earthquakes. Okay. These are just the beginnings of sorrows. The, those, all those things, the wars, the famines, pestilence, earthquakes, that's the beginning of the sorrows. Okay. And they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And many will be offended and betray one another, hate one another. Okay? False prophets shall arise, deceive many. Iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endure he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Okay? So once again, he is not talking about salvation from hell or anything like that. He's talking about salvation from these horrible tribulations that are about to fall on the earth when he when he when he's about to return and near the end of the world okay he's absolutely not talking about heaven and hell i explained this to this guy the other day i don't know i hope he got it it was kind of like he's kind of like eh, i don't know but look it's obviously not about hell okay he's talking about this period this time period the so-called great tribulation all right. If you endure until the end of the tribulation, you will be saved. Endure in the faith. Endure like stay loyal to Jesus. Stay, be a faithful Christian. You will be saved from the tribulation. Okay? Not from hell. That's not what he's talking about. Now, there's another one in um, Mark. It's basically the same thing. Okay, but I'll just show it to you just because might as well. Because this, I mean, as you know, the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, um, although there's there's certainly important differences between them, they, they kind of tell the same story. Uh, and so you often see this repetition of the same themes and the same ideas and same events. And so that event in the Mount of Olives where Jesus gave that speech is repeated here in Matthew 24. That was Matthew 24 that we just read. And it's repeated here again in um, Mark 13. Okay. And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall, shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you. So it's the same thing. It's the same basic thing. I mean, there's some differences here, and it's important to notice these differences. We're not going to go into them right now, but what I'm saying is it's that same speech where Jesus is telling his closest disciples about the end of the world, what's going to happen, what they should look out for. Many shall come in my name and saying, I am Christ and deceive many. Wars and rumors of wars. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, earthquakes in diverse places, famine and troubles. That's just the beginnings of sorrows again. Take heed to yourselves, they shall deliver you up to the councils and the synagogues, you shall be beaten, brought before rulers and kings for my name's sake for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. When they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you shall speak. Then I hear it. This is the same, almost the same line. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son. And children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. The same shall be saved. So you see, once again, it's not talking about hell. It's talking about being saved from these horrible tribulations that have fallen on the earth, okay? 
That's all it is. It's got nothing to do with hell. And it's certainly, it's like talking about his, his disciples. Like, anyway. The point is this. It's not talking about hell. He is not talking about salvation from hell. They're going to be saved from the persecution and tribulations of the end times. Okay? I hope I didn't repeat myself there too much, but it's very it's very frustrating having to hear people talk about these things again and again, always repeating the same questions about these things again and again and again. So I hope that this video is helpful to you, and um, you know if you know anyone who is troubled by these verses, tr troubled and thinks that their uh, their um, salvation is not secure. Well, maybe you can point them to this video and uh, help them, okay? So, thanks for watching. Toronto Bible Study. Hallelujah.